Matt Carroll's HCI 598 Masters of Science Fall 2017 Capstone Presentation Presenting Aloha Preserving Memories in 3D Nowadays, we spend more time than ever recording memories of our own lives and the lives of those we love. There are many ways to preserve memories already in existence. Photography has existed for nearly 200 years and is still one of the most common recording techniques used to this day. Video has existed for 129 years and even 3D video, one of the newest modern technology leaps for making recordings, has existed for nearly 100 years. While technology has made it easier than ever to snap photos and take video in high definition then share these images with others online, even in their modern day equivalent, all of these recording methods still use the same basic technique of capturing a 2D snapshot and displaying it in various formats just like they have for hundreds of years. But for most people, these old 2D archiving techniques are more than enough. So what's the real problem? The real problem is that these old recording methods lack interaction. The goal of recording ourselves and others is to improve the preservation of memories. Interaction is the best way to do this. Adding interaction to memory making and learning processes effectively improve retention by up to 78%. Passively observing photos and video is not an effective way to store memories. We do not learn in isolation, but rather through interactions with our environment. When a person is not available to interact with socially, a system like Aloha provides a similar sense of interaction. Old recording methods also lack personality. You would have to dig through many, many photographs and hours of film to truly grasp a person's personality. Cameras just don't do an effective job of presenting a person's whole personality and idiosyncrasies in a quick and easy to use way. It provides, quite literally, snapshots of a person's life and experiences. While a picture is worth a thousand words, capturing and presenting a person's personality quickly is priceless. While the old techniques may still be good enough for most people, they are long overdue to get a 21st century upgrade. Introducing Aloha. Aloha will capture a person's idiosyncrasies in an animated, interactive 3D avatar and allow users to view these models within an easy to use interface. As the Hawaiian word for both hello and goodbye, Aloha is the perfect name to describe a system where you can visit with loved ones from both present and past. How will we do it? Aloha imports a person's entire figure, scanned into 3D, providing a comprehensive picture of their appearance. Aloha then captures their movements and mannerisms and adds them to their 3D model, giving it their personality. Finally, users are able to interact with these 3D avatars, allowing on-demand social interaction as though the person were actually present. All of this is delivered to users through an attractive and easy to use online interface that makes viewing 3D models easy and fun. Our users will typically be people with close family ties and or close friends networks. This demographic is the most likely to wish to preserve themselves for others or preserve their friends and family for future generations. The key characteristics for the system come from the demographics of the closest similar technology, which was online family archiving and ancestry hobbyists who tend to be 45 years of age or older and female. These primary users likely have limited computer skills and internet knowledge. They primarily use their electronic devices for social media and email. None of the user community owns high-end hardware such as 3D scanners, VR headsets, or hardcore gaming PCs. Requirements were gathered through three users from the primary user group that were asked to describe their expectations from such a system through individual informal interviews. And because interviews are essentially human-based social activities, they are inherently informal. The users were allowed to present their expectations without being interrupted and without being told of the feasibility of such ideas. 
the outcome of these interviews greatly changed how Aloha would be built. The requirements provided through the interviews generated multiple new system features. Some of these user requested features would be added to the system and some were deemed impractical to implement for various reasons. Generally, users requested that the system be accessible from a web browser through a secure sign-in where the models could be uploaded, viewed, interacted with, their background environments, appearance, and wardrobe changed, and then the models could be shared with friends. One of the key takeaways was that users required the system to be instantly accessible without installation and viewable on their low-end hardware through a common web browser. Those marked with a green check were implemented into the system, and those with a red X were deemed to be difficult requirements. The first of these difficult requirements would be scanning and uploading models directly through the application. Users are correct that the scanning process will be one of the greatest barriers to entry for using the system, but developing the interaction needed for this to be built in would be too difficult for this project. Users will be provided with information on how to scan 3D models through third-party apps and given a simulated upload section for evaluation should this feature be implemented in the future. Editing the appearance of 3D models from within the application or photoshopping the models would also be too difficult to implement for this project. This request mostly stemmed from users desiring to modify their appearance, having weight removed or wrinkles smoothed, and improving their looks after the 3D scan was complete. Although this would be a very useful tool and was requested by all the interviewees, these 3D modeling tools would be too difficult for the layperson to use and would likely defeat the entire purpose of accurately recording a person's appearance in the first place. Should users desire to modify their appearance anyways, it would likely need to be done by a professional 3D artist. One of the requirements providers had the idea of being able to arrange the 3D model onto still photography. Superimposing 3D models onto existing 2D photography was a unique idea that brought up interesting cultural concerns. Allowing users to essentially doctor photos and add 3D models of people after the fact made the other interviewees uncomfortable and was deemed an irresponsible use of the system. Instead, it was determined that users may be provided with pre-existing 3D backgrounds that they can load the 3D model within that will provide some customization while avoiding any potential misuse of the system's functionality. Users requested for both the ability to share models on social media and keep models private and secure. While this requirement seemed like a contradiction initially, the problem was solved by allowing the model's link to be disseminated widely, but allowing users to password protect the model to restrict who may view it. While this adds extra steps to sharing the model, security and privacy were deemed more important than ease of sharing, and users will be able to control who views models even if the model's link is shared without their permission. The next trade-off was whether to use high polygon models or low poly models. While high poly would be important for a virtual reality application where a close inspection is likely, the user's lack of high-end hardware and the requirement for online delivery without installation necessitates low poly models. It was determined that Aloha would use low poly models with high resolution texture maps in order to allow faster online delivery without sacrificing the ability to easily recognize the model. The viewing environment was similarly necessitated by the user requirement for web delivery without installing a new application. Originally, a custom 3D environment was to be used to access and view the models online or offline. This would allow more control over model interaction and its background environment, but also required downloading and installing a web browser. Therefore, an existing online environment was used and the models were embedded into Aloha's web page from the existing storage solution. This trade-off allowed for far less back-end development and provided far more time to focus on the design itself. A key decision for the system was the best method for capturing a person's likeness in 3D. 
The first model, pictured above, attempted to 3D model a deceased loved one from scratch in Blender. The bottom model is an example of a model captured from a living relative using a 3D scan. While the top model took far more skill and time and resulted in a higher quality end product, and the bottom model was quick and easy but very poor quality, an interesting observation was made. Users much preferred the low quality 3D scan model and overwhelmingly rejected the high quality model. The best hypothesis for this may be the uncanny valley theory, which suggests that humanoid objects which appear almost, but not exactly, like real human beings elicit uncanny or strangely familiar feelings of eeriness and revulsion in observers. Fortunately, this trade-off was identified very early in the project and saved much time and effort that would have been spent modeling the 3D models and allowed quick, rough 3D scans to be quickly captured and imported. The environment from which to view the 3D models was also determined by the user requirements, but both online-only and virtual reality designs were considered initially. Ultimately, VR adoption has been limited, and therefore none of the user community had access to the hardware. While VR would be the ideal environment from which to interact with these models, it is not ideal for Aloha's users as it requires high-end hardware and above-average computer skills. This trade-off decision changed many of the initial design ideas, but in the end, allows far greater system accessibility and far easier delivery of the system. Pencil sketches were used to help quickly generate ideas, communicate thoughts on paper, and evolve ideas into tangible, robust designs. This process began with a VR turntable style model selection design idea on the left and emerged as the final online only interface seen on the right. The Aloha system attempts to minimize the amount of navigation needed to access its features as much as possible. Most of the system sections are located within a single web page. The sections of the system design include the model library, where users can select the model they'd like to view by a thumbnail with a quick description of the person from which the model was captured. Once the desired thumbnail is selected, the associated 3D avatar is automatically loaded into the viewport. The viewport section is located just to the right of the library's thumbnails. Here users can see the 3D models and control them all from the same area. The 3D window includes various input controls. Click and hold allows users to change the orientation of the model with their mouse. Using the scroll wheel allows users to zoom and holding the middle button on the mouse allows users to reposition the model in 3D space. Around the 3D window are the viewport interactions that allow users to trigger interactions, play pause animations, change the model background, and share the model on social media or email. Finally, the upload section allows users to quickly drag and drop models to import them into Aloha. A second area within this page allows users to learn how to scan the 3D models for themselves. Low fidelity prototypes are ideal for lean development involving quick iteration. High development prototypes are ideal for highly interactive and good looking prototypes. Aloha took a middling, balanced approach to the prototype strategy. It uses the low fidelity approach by not fully developing all website functionality and focusing only on key tasks, while still using the high fidelity approach to fully develop the core 3D interactions and appearance that users would expect in the final complete version. The general workflow for how Aloha was built was to create the website skeleton in Adobe Muse, which allows for quick and easy website composition using basic web components. Photoshop and Illustrator were used to make the website attractive with custom art. Users were scanned into 3D with the Xbox 360 Connect using the free Scanect app. Animations for the models were applied with Mixamo, which provides a simple method of rigging and animating 3D models and modifying the parameters of the animations to fit specific characteristics and personalities. Sketchfab was used to store the models and then the avatars with all textures, rigging, and animations were embedded into a 3D environment on the website using basic programming languages. Features that were ultimately included in the final prototype would 
allow the users to access the system using an interactive website with a simulated login process. This login page did not use a functional form in hopes that it would speed up users' entry into the system as there were only required to click the Create Account or Login buttons and all form fields directed them to do so. The simulated sign-in was intended to demonstrate that the design intends to meet the user requirements for security and privacy. The Model Library section presents all models loaded into the user's account through thumbnail images of the people the 3D models represent, with a quick look at information about that person. These thumbnail images are selectable to immediately load that person's avatar into the 3D viewport. Users can view each model's 3D avatars in an embedded 3D window just to the right of the thumbnail. From this window, they can control the perspective and zoom level, play and pause the animations, or just let it spin slowly with the hands-free automated 360-degree view. Users can also interact with the models using three preset animations available via interaction buttons right of the 3D window. Users can also change the model's background and then reorient the model within the new 3D background to create fun poses in new environments. They can then share the avatars on social media using a working link. Some of the avatars have privacy settings per the user's request, which allowed us to show off this password protected privacy feature. Finally, users can access the upload section where the functionality to drag and drop a 3D model to Aloha has been simulated to evaluate interest and usability should it be included in future designs. The evaluation included five participants from the 45 plus primary user group and one younger participant. Some of the users were part of the requirements process and some had been scanned into Aloha while others had not. These participants' data had been masked to protect their identities and consent was given for all involvement in this project. Each participant was set up to screen share from their personal laptops using Skype, and after giving their consent to be recorded using Active Presenter, they were given instructions on the testing procedures and tasks in document format. They were then provided the prototype web page that would take them through the eight tasks covering all the system's working features. Participants were instructed to attempt to finish the task as quickly as possible but to also think out loud for anything they felt should be mentioned in any area they felt were confusing or poorly designed. The time to complete each task was recorded to provide a quantitative measurement of performance. These times shed some light into the unexpected delays caused by some system inconsistencies and task confusion. Some of the high task times seemed to correlate to individual users' computer skill levels as identified in their difficulty in setting up Skype and screen sharing prior to evaluation. Unfortunately, this was not part of the evaluation, but a general computer skill test prior to the actual evaluation may be good to add in the future. T1 was meant to streamline access to the system using that simulated login feature. This feature actually caused more confusion due to the fact that the form wasn't functional. This made accessing the system more complex than intended and flustered several of the participants. T7 was a simple navigation access involving clicking a button and describing what was on the next page. Even this simple navigation caused long delays and a surprising amount of errors. Error rate was also collected to provide quantitative data on performance metrics. Tasks were broken into subtasks to measure the number of performance errors, misclicks, and mistakes that occurred as participants attempted to complete each of the required actions for each task. Task four, the task with the most errors, involved using a 3D interface and therefore had an unsurprisingly high number of errors. Tasks 7 and 8, however, involved relatively simple navigation but resulted in larger than expected number of errors. Overall, these errors appear consistent with task time delays. After the performance evaluation, participants were asked to complete a quick system usability scale form that provided their rating for each of the key usability areas for the system. User results varied between a low of 65 and a high of 100. Overall, the final mean score was a very respectable 83.3. After the evaluation, 
Each participant was interviewed and asked to complete a basic questionnaire that requested further information about the system and the cultural preferences of the participants. From this qualitative data, it was discovered that users have mixed feelings about seeing dead people in moving 3D avatar form, and those that were not comfortable with it had strong feelings about it. Surprisingly, however, none of the participants were uncomfortable seeing themselves in 3D avatar form or seeing others in that format. The informal interview method also shined further light on some valuable system improvements that could make the system more usable. Some of the key information received from the evaluation was that task one caused more problems than it was worth. As this task was a simulation of a process that has little impact on the system, it should likely be removed or reevaluated once the working process is actually implemented. Likewise, some subtasks, like task six, subtask two, which simply involved exiting an overlay, should be removed as it is of little importance in the evaluation but inflated the total time for the task greatly. Tasks seven and eight should be simplified and worded more clearly as they cause delays through confusing and intimidating wording that could be better described. Some actions like T4 included difficult tasks such as using 3D interface and had expectedly high number of errors. Ideally, Task 4 should be broken into three separate tasks to better quantify the time for each task. Task 7 caused a surprising amount of errors, but was valuable as it helped identify the preferred location for the upload add feature. Users expected this button to be located below the bottommost model where it would logically appear after being uploaded. The usability scores were also higher than expected, even though users were pre-briefed to counter potential bias in favor of the designer slash evaluator. The mean sus total for Aloha of 83.3 is far higher than the average of 68 per usability.gov. Assuming this is an accurate score, it shows that the system is highly usable and easy to learn. The evaluation identified several design issues ranging from cosmetic to major that would be improved for future versions. The sign-in form would be fully developed in order to avoid the confusion associated with a simulated sign-in form. This will fix a minor issue that flustered five of the six participants on the very first task. One of the six participants was able to successfully zoom within the interface. This presents a major error that will be corrected by presenting obvious zoom buttons that users can click to zoom in and out. Another major error was caused by poor placement of navigation elements. The upload button was expected to be in a logical location where the new avatar would appear below the last avatar. This feature will be added in future designs. The final problem is only cosmetic. Two of the six participants requested the how-to link for the learn how to 3D scan area be made more obvious. This can easily be done by increasing its size and changing the link color to contrast against the background more. A revelation that will be incorporated into future versions was that navigation of any sort is far worse than keeping the information all on one page. Even though the website only had two pages, and the navigation link was located on the top menu, many of the users struggled to locate it. Having all elements immediately present on a single page and using overlays instead of navigation will prevent this in the future. Upon reflection, it is apparent that many tasks could be improved to make the evaluation method more valuable. These tasks will be broken down into single actions and be worded more clearly to avoid confusion and intimidation. The most interesting takeaway from this whole evaluation was the cultural observations of participants being comfortable and even greatly enjoying seeing their own likeness and others' likenesses in Aloha, but being uncomfortable with these being public and very uncomfortable seeing loved ones who had passed. Even with the cultural and technological hurdles for such a project, users overwhelmingly enjoyed the system and found it easy to use and enjoyable. Aloha may just have the potential to make a viable offering that could succeed beyond even the scope of this project.